Hey guys, so it's been over a week now that I've been back from Peru and I wanted to tell you guys about my experience of ayahuasca. So Ben and I went to Peru and did ayahuasca with Pulsar Tours. We spent a week in the Amazons, a week in, or we split our other week between Cusco and Machu Picchu and a little bit more in Iquitos. Let me go ahead and explain what ayahuasca is. Ayahuasca is a medicinal tea, it's a healing tea, the chacuna leaves and the ayahuasca vine. They brew them together and that is what ayahuasca is made out of. Now, don't think that this is some kind of hallucinogenic drug that you take and you get high. This is not a recreational drug. This is a healing medicine. The plants are found from the Amazon. This is an Amazon plant-based medicine. I don't know how else to describe it to you guys, but this is not something that you take just to get a trip or a new high or a new crazy experience. I personally have never uh, touched any kind of recreational drugs. I've never been drunk before. I've never smoked before. This was something that I did because I personally needed healing. So initially, Ben was the one who brought it up. Uh, I did a little bit of research, talked to some people who've done it before, and I decided I really needed it, maybe even more than him. So we did it together. So I'm gonna go into what the actual process is like for the ayahuasca, at least for what it was like for us with Pulsar Tours. So with us, there was 17 other people in the group that we were in, along with four counselors, and then there was the shaman, and then the female shaman who were present during the ceremonies and during our group discussions. And what happened at the first day? So we got there, we flew into Iquitos, and we ended up taking um, a, like a two hour bus drive or two hour taxi or bus drive to um, where the, the boat was and then the boat we took that to the where in the Amazons and that was like another two hours so a total of four hours from where the airport or, or our hotel was to get into the Amazons to get where the um, retreat was so from that that day that we landed we met up a couple hours later we met up all of us in the group there had been people there that had been there for already two weeks there are people that had been there for already a week so the way the retreat works is you can either do four ceremonies eight ceremonies or a total of 12 ceremonies and they're all broken up between the days so ben and i did four ceremonies so you go there and your very first day you go there and you sit inside what is called the maloka the Maloka is, it is the most beautiful place. It's so natural, obviously, it's in the Amazon, but it's, it's all handmade by wood from the, the jungles. And we sit in it and we, this is the first time. So go back, going back, reversing back. So we sit and we all have mattresses, like twin size mattresses and it's in this huge um, round Maloka huge ceilings and it's just beautiful there's no electricity or anything like that it's just nature so we sit down and one by one we kind of tell our story um, where we're from our name um, what we've been dealing with um, so these people these 17 people now know your intimate details and it's so therapeutic to tell somebody else what you've been dealing with. Some things you might not want to share with the group that are still very, very deep. You're, you're definitely encouraged to share those secrets. And even if um, they don't, you feel like, you don't feel like you want to share them until maybe the second or the third or ceremony or maybe even after, it's totally fine. But what happens is you share, everyone shares with the group. So these people that are in your group are now so close to you, they, they feel like they're family members. It's the most beautiful thing I've ever experienced, that human connection that I feel like 
I have never had in my life. It, it's just such a beautiful experience. That alone um, was just amazing. Um, ayahuasca is not for everyone. Uh, I don't feel like this, this medicine is for everyone. Um, you have to go with an intention. You can't just go and be like, uh, I just want to free my mind. I just want to do something. No, you have to go with a sense of healing. You have to go with a sense of wanting to know uh, what you want out of this plant. Um, so, so again, this is not a recreational drug. This is something, this is a healing medicine. So after that, um, at sitting in the Maloka and telling um, what our, about ourselves, what we're dealing with. And then the next day is when we have our first ceremony. So our first ceremony comes. So what happens is you get a, a little bit of the brew. So you get called again in like a clockwise motion and they call you up. So it started around 7.30 at night. We got invited into the Maloka around 6.30 to kind of have like quiet time. So at 7.30, we sat down and one by one, we got called and we went up to where the shaman was and um, you're supposed to look into the drink with your purpose, your intention, and then you drink it. Um, you know, and I, I don't think I even had an intention. I just, my first intention, I think was just kind of just to, just to be at peace with myself. I've been dealing with a lot, like I said on my um, Instagram, uh, I don't talk to my mom because of religious reasons. And that's been extremely hard for me for the last couple of years. I don't have a good relationship with my father. So that's been really hard for, for my whole life, pretty much. Um, so then what happened was, uh, the first night I really didn't feel anything and I was just like, kind of like, okay, well, you know, this is just a good experience. I'm experiencing human existence in a whole nother level, being, um, with these people in nature and it was just, it was such a beautiful experience. You're hot, you're disgusting, you're sweaty, it's super humid, but it was a beautiful experience. So my, um, after the second day, I was just like, well, maybe I'm kind of guarded because I was very religious my whole life and I just kind of have this wall up against me and I, I don't think that I should be doing this. Like I was just kind of like battling it in my head. I was like, I don't even know what's going on. So then the second ceremony happened. I drank a little bit more this time. I drank like one and a half of the glasses. Let me tell you that the stuff tastes absolutely disgusting. I, I mean, by the, the thir third ceremony, all I had to do was smell it and I ended up throwing up again. It was, it's just, it's revolting. Um, so what happened was the second ceremony. So again, after your ceremony, we sit at the, the next day, we sit in the Maloka and we kind of tell each other our experiences during the medicine. So we, we get the, the ayahuasca at 7.30, the ceremony ends at 12.30, um, 12.30 a.m. So what happens is the shaman um, then says that the, the ceremony is over and everyone claps and the ceremony is over. Um, but some people are still experiencing their experiences. Uh, ayahuasca is, is crazy because it's, it's something, it's not everyone's going to have vision. Some people just have emotions. Some people have a release. Um, you hear about people having diarrhea and like going to the bathroom and like the bushes and like all this weird stuff. But in reality, not everyone has visions. Not everyone is going to vomit. Not everyone is going to shit on the floor. Like everything is just different for every single person. And I think that was also um, my problem. I felt like I had this idea of what ayahuasca was, what I should be experiencing. So by the second ceremony, um, I didn't have like crazy visions per se. The uh, shaman actually 
told me he wanted me to focus on my relationship with my mom and that he saw that I was going to um, have a, a communication with her in the future and we were just she was going to approach me and we were going to start talking I was like that is not going to happen I, I'm, and I want to I'm okay with that and I kind of just wanted to be okay with the situation and um, I just wanted peace and that ceremony was so beautiful and now that I think about it it wasn't like I was seeing these crazy visions but I I had imagined it was a very just I, I was like this this thin piece of paper and I was just like floating on water and it was just like this beautiful ocean and I was just like there and I felt like I was there during the whole ceremony it was just like a really sense of just being at peace and it was it was a really beautiful feeling and that was enough for me and I still didn't perceive myself as having these like immense visions or anything like that but it was for me um, now that I look at it now that I know what the process is like and they keep on the people at the retreat they keep on saying like it's a process it's a healing process just listen to the medicine listen to the ikaros so the ikaros are songs that the shaman sings during the ceremony it doesn't happen immediately it happens a little over an hour after the ceremony gets started, which is when, uh, but some people have already had the ayahuasca start kicking in at that point, whether it's vomiting, crying, uh, again, it's all sorts of ways that you do this purging of this emotional purging. So the second ceremony, um, that happened to me. And then, um, so the, one of the counselors came up to me, and she was just like, oh my gosh, tell me, tell me, please tell me that you experienced something. And I, I kind of told her how I, how I had my experience that night. She's like, you know what? Everyone experienced the ayahuasca differently. Don't think that this is something that you're going to have to see these crazy visions or anything like that. It's not like that. So it's definitely something that you have to keep in mind if you are going to do this ayahuasca. Um, if you're going to do a retreat or wherever you decide to do it. Um, so you have to remember that it's not something that you're just gonna be like, oh my God, you're gonna see all these crazy visions. I mean, some people say that they see themselves like and the universe and the moon is there and everyone is different. So that was my second experience. So my third ceremony was really unique because uh, my sec after my second ceremony, one of the counselors came to me and after I had told her about my night and her telling me um, everyone experiences things differently, I kind of really opened up even more to her than I had in the group and about um, different things that have happened to me in my past, um, being sexually abused um, for many years. And I um, just told her a lot of different things. And she's just like, I really encourage you to talk about this during group share tomorrow. And I was just like oh, like, oh my gosh, I don't want to. So come group share t the next day, uh, I was only op open to sharing maybe like 10% of what I had told her. And so the shaman's like, I want to work on tonight. I want to work on um, getting rid of that for you, uh, healing your sexual abuse. And I was just like, whoa, <laughs> that's crazy. Um, so yeah. Um, so we went in, when the third ceremony started, took the glass and looked at it and a, um, the girl next to me and was saying that we shouldn't have like an intention, maybe we can have a mantra together. And our mantra was, give me strength. So she's like, maybe you can say like, give me strength to help deal with my mom or something like that. So I was just like, okay. So when I, I drank my drink, went back to my mat, sat down. And I was like, please just give me strength, give me strength, give me strength. And the whole time I was just feeling like so ener energized, like I was a charger. Like I was, I was like, imagine myself being like this gold plate on the floor and I was just being charged with energy. Um, and then I imagined the shaman was like this 
this person that was guiding me and I was like this wheelbarrow and he was throwing hearts, like literal like hearts, like cartoon hearts, like inside of me. And I was like catching them with my body and then I was listening to the female shaman and I had imagined that she was my grandmother, which was, um, she lived with us up until I was six years old and we were walking through the pasture and she was telling me how much she loved me and it was really, really beautiful and I forgot to mention that that day when the ceremonies first started, um, the moment I sat back down to my mat, I had imagined like my mom and dad standing there and they both embraced me and they they told me um, they love me, but not, they didn't say they love me, but they hugged me like, like an I love you hug. And I can't really remember if my parents, either of them have ever done that to me before. So again, it was just a very emotional night. Um, it went from from that and then I just didn't remember anything. We, we went up, you also go up for your ikro. Everyone has their own ikro, their own song. So I went up for my ikro. I sat back on my mat and I don't remember what happened from that at that point. And then, um, then I went into um, him throwing hearts at me and my body touching them. And then I was dancing to her songs along with having these visions of, like I said, my, my grandmother and it was it was so beautiful it was just unbelievable the whole time I was holding Ben's hand so my body was moving like crazy during the ceremony um moving in all sorts of directions and I was just feeling so energized like not having all this like crazy energy but just I just had like I felt like I had all this power coming through my hands and just this heat um, I, I wasn't sure what I was experiencing. This was the first time I've experienced this before. And so what happened was, um, after that, uh, the ceremony had ended. I kind of heard it end, but I was I was still having all these like different visions. And uh, so the ceremony had ended. And what happened was, um, I still heard like everyone's voices, but I was just in a different world. Um, and then this. Then when I finally got out of it, um, I was welcomed back from to reality, I guess, from um, two of the people that were next to me. They're like, oh my gosh, the ceremony has been over for over an hour now, and you talk about your, tell us about your experience, and it was just, it was so beautiful. Um, I, I honestly have never felt so much love before, and it was such a beautiful, beautiful experience. Um, definitely a healing experience. And I feel that um, I, I just have never felt like that much love, just I needed it. So the night had ended. Ben said he didn't experience anything, which I was really sad about. Um, mind you, the first night he had this profound experience that he shared on his Instagram. So after that, um, that experience had happened, the, um, went back to bed and kind of had this like hiccup. And what ended up happening is I ended up like our beds were enclosed in this bug netting and I had to crawl up underneath the bug netting. And then I, I was like, oh my gosh, like I just needed air because it was like so hot, as I said. So I got up underneath and then I violently threw up, like as I was walking to outside, I was like, like calm down. And I ended up going close to the balcony and purging so violently that I was literally on the tip toes of my, tippy toes on my tip toes. And I felt like I was gonna like go right over the balcony. And I felt like, I, I was looking and I just, I threw up several times and I, as I said, it was extremely violent and it was into like this black abyss and it was like, and I was trying to be like, calm down, like you don't need to throw up that hard and it was like, no, like this is so violent, you need to get it out of you um, and it was just, it was so powerful and I had remembered at the beginning of the ceremony, the shaman said he wanted to get rid of my sexual abuse and uh, 
it was insane. Like looking back at it all and thinking about it all, it was just an incredible, incredible evening. So that happened and I just remember sitting down and just being like, holy shit, like I cannot believe how amazing this is. And just taking it all in, being in the Amazon, just being in all this beautiful world. So then the fourth night came along and what ended up happening is Ben and I decided we were going to do this together. So Ben, um, we held hands during the whole thing. We had our song together. Um, so we, I was just like, you know what, if nothing happens, I'm totally fine because, um, I had such a profound third experience that I didn't need anything. We laid on the mat together. We had our song, um, and then we sat back down on our, on our individual mats and we continued to hold hands. So after that happened, I kind of just remember falling asleep and I don't remember the when or how fast that was falling asleep and then i just like got up violently threw up on the side of my mat and i was like what the heck like we're each given buckets to throw up in so it's not like we're gonna throw up like um randomly in bushes or anything like that no so i threw up violently like on the floor i was like what the heck this is ridiculous so ben like hands the bucket to me i'm like no no, no. i'm like i'm done throwing up so and then I just threw up again and again, and I just felt this rage and wrath of my father, like, boom, right in my face. And I was just really closed in, and I felt like a child, and I just started crying really loudly. And um, keep in mind that, like, my father is older now, and even though he was extremely abusive growing up, um, I felt like me and him have a decent relationship now so that experience was crazy because i was crying out loud and then ben is like oh my gosh what's what's wrong is everything okay and i told him it was my father and i, I it was just this i guess this pain i was just still carrying it was it was terrible um but through the darkness i saw the beauty of it and how I, i've been able to get healed and then when I went, laid back on my mat, Ben like closed himself off. And I was like, is everything okay? And he told me that he was envisioning himself as my father, as a child, and how he was treated like an animal. And that's when I realized like our connection was on a whole nother level of being connected, which was just incredible. So then the ceremony was over and I was still having these like super hot hands. Um, energy was like just pouring out of me. I was like, is anyone else feeling like this? And people were coming up to me. They're like, oh my gosh, your hands were so warm. Oh my goodness. Like, so I was a massage therapist for many years. Um, and I, I always thought that I had some kind of energy of healing energy of some sort with Reiki. I practiced that for a little bit. Um, but never really got into it. So then after that whole experience, um, I was able to get re in touch with that. And I felt like, um, I was able to heal somebody's shoulder that, uh, some, he's told me that he's had chronic shoulder pain for several years. Um, I was able to do, uh, heal somebody else with something else. And it was just, it was, ongoing for the rest of the time I was there and I just felt like if I don't go back home and utilize this energy this healing that I have um, this healing energy I feel like the world is missing out on something so that kind of wraps up my whole ayahuasca experience it was profound to say the least um, that was just ayahuasca then we went to Cusco which was amazing and then we went to Machu Picchu um, we did San Pedro and Cusco, which was just beautiful. Um, it's just makes you really in tune with nature and just love and just, it was so beautiful. Um, I would say if uh, you're thinking about doing an ayahuasca trip, um, do some research. And if you have any other questions, leave them in the comments below and I will give you uh, the link of where I went to um, down by in the, in the description box. 
and um, I just I feel like a completely different person after this whole experience. Uh, I feel like I'm I'm just complete. So I just can't 